Welcome back to Omni Garage. So for those of you who haven't seen, we did a extensive detail. We spent probably about 100 hours, right? Yeah, 100 hours. WRX. So today we're going to do a bit of a wrap up session. We're going to walk you through the products that we use from the beginning to end. Um, talk about why we use them, what we like about it, and a couple of things about what we'll do differently. So we're going to start now with the engine bay. So we use two of Meguiar's products to clean the engine base. We use one to clean and then one to dress. So to start with, we got the pressure washer. We gave the engine bay a, um, a light rinse off and that just helped to remove any of the dirt and big chunks of stuff that were stuck on there. And then we then drenched the um, surface down with uh, Meguiar's APC, the all purpose cleaner. Now this is diluted uh, four to one. And that, we just made sure that we really soaked it down and then we could get in and clean it with our race glaze brush. Yeah, so we um, basically used the race glaze brush to clean most of the engine bay um, without using any type of mitts or anything. And the reason that we use this is because you can get into all of the tight areas it has a nice long handle as well, so you can reach down into some of the tighter areas in yeah. the engine bay. And this product foams really well, so that combination is definitely good for cleaning that up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this um, this chemical is quite uh, potent as well, um, so doing your engine bay outside, getting this done first, is probably a good way to do your detail. And the reason we do the engine bay first is to make sure that any of the, uh, I guess, any of the dressing and everything in there has time to cure over the, the portion of the detail that we've got. And also you're spraying water everywhere, so if you'd already gone through, detailed your paint and then came back to do your engine bay, you're going to get a whole heap of overspray all over your glass, so that's why we recommend that you do this process first. Yeah, knock out your engine bay. So once we cleaned it, we use something called Meguiar's Hyperdressing. Now Hyperdressing is amazing for um, producing a really nice satiny, satiny matte finish on your, uh, on your plastics in the engine bay, um, and we've got this diluted at 4 to 1 for a yeah. really nice satin finish. A matte, yeah, and, and it's more of a, yeah, I guess it is satiny matte finish, it doesn't leave any gloss behind, which is the key here, you don't want your engine bay to be glossy, you don't want it to look like these heaps of high spots, you just want that nice, I guess, matte satin finish, which yeah. is really what you're after. So it actually says on the bottle here, so a satin finish would be a 3 to 1 dilution, so a natural finish, which I think we probably describe as matte, right, is yeah. a 4 to 1. Um, you can do high gloss 1 to 1, medium gloss 2 to 1. I think that 4 to 1 dilution on this, once you clean it up, it looks really nice. Yeah. So we just left it at that, we let the engine bay dry for the whole period of the detailing series. And then at the end we came back and we just basically rubbed off any high spots that were left in the engine bay. There wasn't a lot because that had lots of time for that product to soak in. And as we've just talked about, it leaves a really nice finish behind. So this is really easy, it's really simple, um, nothing special here, um, but it definitely works. I do think that if you had more of a modern car, they sort of come with lots of plastic coverings all over the bonnet and things like that. If you've got a more of an older car like we did here, um, I sort of tacked up a few of the important areas, a few of the electrical connections and stuff like that. That's just a little bit of peace of mind from my point of view that I wasn't getting those parts wet. You probably don't need to do that, but um, for me, I just, I just felt like I needed to do it. So you can either choose to do that or not. But definitely, if you had a more modern car, you're going to spray and you're good to go. You don't need to worry about taping anything up. Yeah, so that was the engine bay. Probably took us 20 to 30 minutes all up to, yep. do, um, to do that. So nice and easy. Results are amazing. And you spend another 5 to 10 minutes at the end right at the end of that detail series when we went and wiped down the surfaces to make sure that we had a really nice uniform finish. So the next part of the detail series once we finished with the engine bay was moving into the decontamination wash. So we started with um, Obsessed Garage has private labelled um, the decon wash. Now this is from my memory, it's citrus red from our chemical guys. This stuff um, has got a nice sort of citrus scent and um, did a really good job of pulling all the waxes and um, solvents and things like that that was on the paint. Yeah, I was really impressed with the soap. I thought that um, if this wasn't a specific decontamination soap, the um, the way it foamed, the way it reacted in the bucket, yeah. um, and the smell of it, it's pretty good. I it's almost use that as a as yeah. ongoing soap. Yeah, if this wasn't going to strip anything, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this was a really fantastic soap to use, and um, you could definitely tell that it was doing a good job of pulling everything off because the water was just sitting on the paint which means that we have removed a lot of those waxes and stuff and um, that means that we had a nice bare surface to get ready into our decontamination phase. So we used the um, MTM foam gun mixed with that and we used the, um, the, the microfiber madness. Microfiber madness and credit mix. So that combination worked really well to prepare our surface ready for our chemical part. Yeah, so what we did once we finished with the uh, with the wash side, so we did rinse the vehicle completely um, and then we moved into really a two two stage piece. Um, I think we started with the iron decon first to remove any iron particles that were embedded into the paint. Yeah. Um, and you do it through quite a bit of this product. We um, do. I think we probably went through almost half of the um, of the gallon here. Yeah. So this isn't process. diluted. So this is um, this is an RTD. This is ready to use. So no dilution here. So hence why you do blow through quite a lot of product. And 
And I do find that having to spray the car a lot of the times with these um, sprayers and things like that, I think probably here you'd probably want a a pump to do that. I mean, if you're yeah. doing vehicles a lot of the time during the day, you definitely want a pump for that. And, and I'd like to get like a, um, what are those foaming? Oh, these IK sprayers. IK sprayers is yeah. something that I'd like to look into. Just, just for doing this step of the process. Yeah. Rovi also makes some really cool new tools, I think, in the 2021 range that we could check out as well. If you're doing one car, you can probably get by with it, but if you're doing this for a living or you're doing multiple cars a week, there's yeah. no way you'd want to spray that down on a whole car. Um, and then that flows into the Tarek stage as well. You know, yeah. You're trying to cover the whole car with that. We blew through, I think, just over one liter of that, so about 32 ounces doing the whole car. There was quite a lot of tar in and around the, the bottom rockers and around the wheel arches and things like that. A lot of tar had stuck onto there, so, this Car Pro Tarex did a fantastic job of pulling the tar off the paint. Really happy. You know, you saw in the videos that as we sprayed on, you could almost see the little tar droplets running down um, running down the vehicle. So this product is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Once we finished with the, um, the tar, we moved into the next stage, but we had a bit of a, a muck up as well using that Tarex with uh, this here, yeah. which, is the, uh, which is the Nano Skin Auto Scrub. This is the six inch pad. Um, and we use this with a hand strap on the back. Yeah, so we used that with our, our nano skin glide. Did a really good job of removing those um, those embedded particles sort of stuck into the clear coat. So they came off really nice. We got the paint to feel nice and smooth. But then what happened is there was a little bit of a front section that had a little bit of tar left on it. So what I did, stupidly, was I sprayed the Carpro Tarex on there, got the nano skin auto scrub to take that tar off. And what happened was, this is a fresh pad, but what happened is, this sort of gel stuff on, on the inside of the, or on the back side of this pad here, started to sort of disintegrate a little mm. bit. So the Tarex ate away at this, and it made it feel quite tacky. And then you could feel that as you went like that, you could feel that these things were sort of squishing together and almost peeling off. It was pretty instant too, how yeah. it happened. And I've still got the pad now, and it hasn't fixed itself, so I've got to throw that out. So I recommend not to use Tyrex and the nano skin auto scrub together because you'll ruin the face of that pad. Yeah, that's a fantastic pad though. I've used clay in the past and yeah. you know, having a six inch pad, it's not something you really need to micromanage too much your clay no. process. You can put this on the uh, on a polisher as well, but I find with the hand strap on here, this is super that's easy. Fine. You can get yeah. around the car. I think we have one of these each, maybe half an hour, absolute max to do the whole vehicle. Um, and, and yeah. the good thing about that is that if you drop it on the ground, you just put it in the bucket, clean it off and away you go. You know, If you're using um, clay bars and things like that, as soon as you drop that piece of clay on the ground, you've got to pull off another little section and reuse it. And um, I think over time, the more vehicles we do with this, this setup's going to end up becoming cheaper than using clay every time. Absolutely. I think one of the things that I was excited about in the decon stage on the WRX was trying a different iron remover um, with the Meguiars on here because I had experience with uh, Carpro's IronX in the past. Yeah. What I can tell you though, after doing this, an iron remover is an iron remover. They all stink. They yeah. all do the same job. I think it doesn't matter which one doesn't you buy. Just buy one that's cheap because you're going to buy through quite a lot of product. Bearing in mind that you're probably not going to be pulling off a lot of iron off your car. There wasn't a lot of iron coming off the blue WX. I thought there was because I used to live next to sort of some um, train tracks. But um, no iron came off at all. We actually ended up pulling quite more iron off the um, yeah. off the rotors and off the tyres than we did off the paint. But it's like a, it's a feeling of completeness knowing that you've gone through this step, you've gone through this process and you've got the paint nice and decontaminated ready for you to come into your polisher stages. I think it's, it's a really nice feeling when you eventually get there. Yeah, so that was the decontamination stage of the wash. Once we finished the decontamination stage, we had to get the car dry. So what we did is used our typical process, which was the Ego 530 blower. But because everything had been stripped off the car, all the contaminants were gone, uh, and all of the waxes were gone, this pretty much just blew water around. Didn't really do a great job at sending it off the surface. Yeah, so to pretty much finish up that process, we used the um, our drying towels. Now these are um, from the Rag Company. These towels did probably most of our drying, I think. And and in hindsight, I think what you want is you want a real high um, GSM plush towel, especially for drying this, because there is a lot of water left on the car. There is there is no waxes to get that water off. So we did blow through a lot of these towels. I think I have ten here. We used probably nearly all of them. So. Yeah, I think if we were doing this process again, I'd probably spend a bit more time to try and find what a really good drying towel is. Yeah, we don't use it most of the time, but if no. you're doing you know a detailed series, you do need a couple of good drying towels. I, I actually think that's a great idea. So once the car was dry, the next process for us was to jump into the taping stage. And I think the important thing to remember here is what we did is we did our decom wash the previous evening, let the car then sit completely for a, for a night and that before just, we jumped in with our tape. And that just helped let the water dry out all, all of the cracks that you couldn't get with your towels and things like that. And I think if you have that luxury for your car to sit overnight in the garage, 
I think it's a good it's a good thing to do, and I'm pretty happy we did that. Actually. Yeah, I think it makes the detox process a whole lot um, quicker as well because you're not starting the day with your decon. You know, a few hours deep, you do get a rest, and then you can start your day out by taping. Taping, because if you're putting tape on wet paint, yep. it is not going to stick, and you're just going to get frustrated. Because taping the car is something you want to slow down, you want to take a lot of time to do, and you want to make sure you're taping up all your trim surfaces, all around the windows, anything that you don't want to get polish onto should have tape on it. Yeah, so we use two different variants of 3M tape here. Um, so we had the uh, Precision Poly Tape, which is the purple tape here, um, and then we also had the green variant as well, which is the uh, basically the normal masking tape. Um, I don't know what your thoughts were about the, the two different tapes. I know I have a preference. The idea of this um, precision tape is that it's meant to be more contourable. So it's been, you're meant to be able to bend it around light things, um, around door handles and things like that. My preference is, you don't really need this. Yeah, see, I'm on the contrary. I really enjoyed working with this. Um, you know, I found it quite a bit easier to try and contour that around surfaces rather than having to tear off new bit, tear yeah. off new bit. This is more like a painter's tape, I think, where this feels a bit more plasticky. Um, I mean, it is poly tape, right? Yeah, it's got more of a coating to it, so it feels a lot slicker. This is a lot more harder to rip. There is a bit of a technique that you've got to do to rip it, whereas this rips a lot easier. This doesn't seem to bend around surfaces as easier, but this is the tape that we use most of the time. We've got um, a couple of sizes here. And um, I really do think you need a combination of sizes. The thicker stuff is to go around the lights, the thinner stuff is to go around sort of mirrors and then around door handles. So I think you need a combination of sizes. Whether you need a combination of the tapes, totally up to you. But um, one recommendation is that you do need it, the other recommendation is you don't. If you are going for a budget setup and, and um, you're a bit short on funds, just go for the green stuff. If you had the luxury of being able to buy both tapes, then get the purple as well. I just think. As time goes on, we probably will end up using both tapes. I mean, on the Subaru WRX, there's not a lot of tight spots mm -hmm. that you need to bend around and things like that. If you were doing a car that had lots of, I suppose, excessive body work and special moulds and things like that, then that tape would probably come a little bit more useful for you. Yeah, absolutely. So the other part we did when we moved into the test spots, so after taping, um, we obviously played with a few different combos about polishes and, and pads. Um, but what was really important before that process is to make sure we had a good lighting setup so we yep. were able to inspect the paint. So we pretty much relied on these two lights here yeah. for the majority of the detail. So we used the uh, the Rupes um, Swirl Finder, which is just a light pen. It does have a, if you pull the, um, pull this part of the pen backwards, it gives you more of a, a flared out sort of light. If you pull it in a bit more, it does narrow that down. This pen was really good at finding the swirls and scratches and letting us to assess the paint and seeing what kind of compounds we potentially needed to use. And then for the bigger areas, we ended up using the, um, this is the, the Ryobi light. Um, and basically what's quite handy about this is it can change directions. So you can kind of put this on a panel um, and then direct it on whichever whichever way you wanted. So not necessarily a detailing specific light, this no. is more of a workshop light, so you can't change the colour temperature, you can't muck around with uh, the intensity of it, um, but I think the, uh, the amount of lumens that this put out was pretty fantastic. Um, we had pretty decent overhead lighting as well, uh, but I think one of the things I'd probably look at is probably um, you know, some good scan group lights if we were to do a this is, detail. This is definitely an area that Omni Garage is really keen to get into because Although this is a budget setup, it kind of worked. We definitely missed a lot of scratches. Um, I would like lights on big poles that we could move around with the vehicle. We could do the color temp, and we could really get in and really detail these scratches out. Yeah, for a couple of hundred dollars, I think this was a really good setup to, yeah. to help us get by. Um, we couldn't have done it without really good overhead lighting as well. Though. Yeah. So, so the garage lighting in here is really good. Um, definitely a lot of bulbs per sort of square meter on the roof there so this does help but I think a good setup of lights is definitely something if you're really interested in getting into this you do need to invest the time and money so scan grips is probably an area that we're going to invest some time into looking at. So once we had the car all taped up we had our lighting set up all uh, in order it was moving on to a test spot to work out which of the compounds that we had here was going to work best with the uh, blue WRX paint. So we used a bit of combination, we started using a bit of Jess Car Correction Compound, we used Sonex Cut Max, and we used a, vari a variation of different pads. We've got uh, the Rupees Wool Pads here, and we've got the Rupees Yellow Pads. So we found that the best combination was to use, um, to start with Sonex Cut Max, with the uh, Rupees Wool Pad, and we ended up doing six passes 
at um, speed six on the rupees Porsche. Yeah, we decided pretty early on once we started the test spot that we were going to have to two step the car. Um, and I mean, we pretty much knew that from the get go, yeah. but we thought, hey, look, we may be able to get away with it. Absolutely not. Um, you know, it was pretty important that we had these blue uh, these blue wall pads here. I don't think we would have got away with the detail doing the yellow no. wall pads from Rupes. And so we had a combination of sizes. We've got the 5 inch, the 3 inch, and the, the eyebrow um, size there. And that was definitely a good combination of polishes, um, polishing pads and polishing machines. I think you get around most of the car with the 5 inch. Um, the machine that we were fighting over the most was a 3 inch. So if you're working with a buddy, you probably want two 3 inch machines because that's the one you sort of grab the most to go around your contours, in and around sort of tight areas and things like that. Yeah, I think it was a luxury having three machines. Um, our hybrid machine turned up quite late in the process. We actually had to leave all of those little areas, which probably yeah. wasn't the way I wanted to work. We couldn't complete a section because no. we still had to go back using the smaller one inch pads here. Um, but I mean, really a big luxury to have those three machines. You and can I, get by with the two I think ones. that smaller machine, the one inch was absolutely, uh, probably a must almost to do your bumpers really well. So if you've got a car that's got a nice tight bumper with lots of um, different parts to it, you probably do want to use your one inch to get in and out of there. Yeah. As we went through the car, obviously after each pass, we wanted to make sure we could inspect the surface. So we had our uh, our polishing removal towels here, um, and we teamed those up with the surface prep. And because we were using the Sonex Cut Max, this stuff doesn't dust a lot. There's not a lot of dust in here. We used it in a garage, non-ventilation. We just had to have the door up, no dusting. And basically you could almost get away with just wiping it down with a towel. But we did use the surface prep and we also had a little go every now and again with the Car Pro Eraser just to compare these two products. And we sort of found that there was really no difference with taking the polish off with those products. I guess the, the, the only real benefit of using the Car Pro Eraser was it had a nice scent. But yeah. actually when you're about 6, 12, 18 hours deep into polishing, that scent does get a bit sickly after a while. Yeah, it's a bit like that iron smell, right? That's beautiful at first. The iron's not beautiful at first, don't yeah. get me wrong there. But um, I think that's your difference between those two products, yeah. smell. Um, so if you're doing a lot of cars, you probably want to go with this because it doesn't really have a distinct smell at all yeah. to it. And we used, well, a bit half the bottle of this or half a gallon of this. This is already diluted, so no dilution here. You just use it straight up. So half a bottle of that and we managed to do the whole car with that. So, so I know you probably weren't as happy as you could have been with this combination by the end of the detail. I think that, you know, we did go pretty aggressive with the Sony yeah. Cut Max, but you're thinking next detail in a couple of years? I think I'd like to chase a little harder. I think we, we didn't correct the car as best as we probably could. So next time I'd like to try something slightly aggressive. I'd like to try something like a, a Meguiar's um, microfiber cutting pad with something like Meguiar's M101, just to chase a little harder. But to do that, we'd probably have to have lights and a bit decent setup so that we could really see what we were, were doing. We then finished up the car, and the last step we used um, Sonax um, Perfect Finish, and we used that on the, the Rupees Yellow Pad. And, and this stuff is really pleasant to work with. It doesn't dust, um, doesn't create any mess, no sling. These pads are really good. Um, and we've got a really nice finish on the car. I mean, it creates a nice gloss factor and um, really happy with how this has actually really brought out the paint. Yeah, I think one of the things that was key in this part of the process as well, because we had about half a dozen of each pad, um, was making sure that we blew out the pads consistently. Um, so I think if you didn't have an air compressor, you're probably going to want a dozen plus pads. Yeah. Um, and you're going to want to wash them out each evening, which we did as well, on top of blowing them out as we went with the air compressor. We used a uh, Team Tools um, air gun with a decent sized compressor and even then, I think we probably need a slightly bigger compressor just to get that airflow through these pads. Blowing out is really key. Yep. So I think if you were sort of new to the process, you didn't have an air compressor, you're going to need 10 plus pads. And I, and I actually wish we had more than half a dozen. So I'd be looking at getting 10 next time. Yeah, I think one of the things that we found washing these wall pads, they don't hold up too well. Um, there's probably a, a lifespan to those, and we probably exceeded it through the amount of washing that we did as well. Yeah, because we process. did, um, as time got on, these are brand new pads, but we did end up blowing through the back of these pads here. So the sticky Velcro ended up peeling off. So. I think more pads you've got, the better it is for you. Yeah, so for a 17 year old car though, I think we did an awesome job using this combination here. Yeah, absolutely, we could have chased a bit harder, uh, but it's also, you know, we're working with the products that we had, the pads that we had, yeah. um, and obviously being in New Zealand, it's not super accessible to get something overnight when we realized, hey, look, we probably could chase a little bit harder, but I guess it gives something else to, uh, to look forward to in the future. And I suppose working on that older car, we don't know how much clear coat's on there, we don't know how many times it's been polished, so we were just doing a bit of guesswork, and so this is where we started to guess, but now that we know a little bit more about the car and we're learning a little bit, a, f a few more things and we're getting better, then I think next time we can chase, chase a little harder. 
So what about the towels though? Were you happy with how these towels performed and the amount that we had? Yeah, so I got these towels from Rare Company. These are a low GSM towel. We use these for the polish removal and I've got 20 towels there and that was definitely enough. This, these products wipe off really easily. So 20 towels is definitely enough. I used um, Microfiber Restore to clean all the microfiber towels and that product works really well. Pulling out all those oils um, from the polish in here, cleans them up really nicely. So 20 towels is definitely enough. So the next part in the process, I actually uh, quite enjoyed this bit, um, which was polishing the glass, getting it all cleaned up, ready for coating. And I think one of the reasons I enjoyed it so much is you can be a little bit uh, more careless, I would say, because yeah. you're not worrying about blowing through any It's a real satisfying step. So yeah. we used um, Jessica Correction Compound on a Rupert's wall pad, and that's all you're doing is you're just cleaning up the glass, you're removing any of those hard water spots and any of those hard other contaminants that are on the glass um, before you get into your coating stage. So. You're not removing scratches off your glass or anything like that, it's just a cleaning phase. Now something you could do, um, obviously we use the Jess car, we do have uh, Carpro Siri glass. Um, you can use that in combination with a rayon pad if you are trying to remove scratches from the glass. Um, but to be honest, the amount of time that you're going to spend doing that, you have to work on such a small area, I think, you know, do this, clean up the glass, or alternatively, replace the glass. Yeah, it's going to be a hard effort to remove any scratches out of the glass. So we managed to clean our glass up really nicely. Yep. Um, all the water spots removed came up really nicely. So just be a little bit careful when you are getting close to your rubber trim with your pads, is that you will get sort of black marks. You will get that rubber trim dirt getting onto your pad. So you just want to be a little bit careful when you're getting close to that area. Yeah, one thing you can do is you can use your tape, just like when you're polishing. Yeah, um, You know, tape it up. You know, the more prep you do, the easier it is for the cleanup. Um, what we did once we had compounded the glass is we used our invisible glass um, to make sure that we removed as much of that polish off the uh, off the surface and then we moved into our isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, so using the alcohol that just cleaned the surface, stripped it back so it was nice and bare, ready for us to then apply our, our, our coating. And we used the um, the Rad Company, their waffle weave glass towel was absolutely amazing at cleaning up that glass and preparing that surface for the coating. Yeah, I think this is probably my favourite I Rare really like this well. It is yeah. really good for clean glass and I don't think you know what you're missing out on until you actually have this in hand. Yeah. And you use if you're using glass. invisible glass in combination with a waffle weave towel, you won't get any streaks on your glass. It's literally spray on, wipe off, and that takes any of the um, the residual um, chemical off the um, off the glass really well and it leaves a nice streak free um, sort of finish. Then we moved into the glass coating and I was really excited to try a different product. Um, in the past we pretty much only have experience with um, things like uh, Rain-X. rain, -X. rain -X, that's it. rain -X is like a spray on, let it sit for a little bit and then wash it off. That product beads pretty well but it's a really hard product to use. I find I always get streaks on the glass yeah. and I find I end up getting really angry with it because it is a hard product to use and it doesn't last very long. It might last no. a couple of days in heavy rain and then it's all gone. So definitely stepping it up to some sort of glass coating is good. We've used uh, Wolf's Nano Glass Sealant on, yep. on your car before and um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so the Wolf's is, um, is no, I think referred to as probably a gold standard from Matt from its Seth's Garage anyway. Yeah. It's good, it's not great. So water behaviour is okay. You know, it lasts for a long time, you don't get judder with your windows, so I think if you're looking for something that is going to do okay, you know, I'm not raving about it, but I'm also not... Uh, not your water beating starts at about sort of 80 to 100 kilometers yeah. an hour, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, so I think that was one of the things we were looking forward to on here, is that water behavior at potentially 50 kilometers an hour. Yeah. Um, so pretty easy to apply it. You apply it in circular motions to the glass. Yeah. Um, I believe we did two coats. We did two coats of, yeah. the, of, the, of this glass. And we used um, basically Carpro Block and Carpro Suede Applicator to apply it to the glass. You let it sort of dwell for a period of time and then you come back um, with our coating removal towel, which is our green coating removal towel, and you remove the um, that, that glass coating. So I know that you've had this on the car now for a good couple of months. Yeah. What are your honest thoughts about it? My honest thoughts is really easy to apply, really easy to work with, and it doesn't cause any smudging on the glass. And it's sort of 50 kilometers an hour, I get nice water behavior. It starts to bead, it sheds off the glass really well, and it does a really nice job at water beading on the side and on the on the rear rear window. To be honest, I think with this here, you'd be pretty safe to be able to remove the windows, win, not the windows, don't remove the windows from your car, but you could probably take the wipers off your car yep. and be pretty safe. Obviously, don't do that, but I think that um, the water behavior on it, you don't need to be moving. The water behavior through. on it is amazing. It's better than the Wolf's, and this is this is really good. The part that I really hate about this product is that when I do come to use my wipers, I get wiper judder. 
So it comes up, grrr, goes back, grrr, and it leaves these like slit sort of marks all over the glass. So that is a real bad thing for using this product. I really don't like it because of that. And because of that, I'm going to have to get into our um, polishing stages now to peel that back off the glass because I want to try another product. I'm going to keep it on the side and on the rear, rear window because of that ward behavior is exceptional and I don't have any wipers there so I don't need to be wiping and clearing that glass on the sides there so I am going to be taking it off the front just because of that noise. Yeah, and we have tried to put this on the actual wiper blades as well. Yeah. It hasn't made a difference. Hasn't so made a difference. as I said with this, you know, if you have wiper blades on your car, which I'm pretty sure you do, this is probably not going not to gonna be, uh, a product. be a product. I've yeah. done a bit of research about this as well on a couple of forums, and other people have had the similar experience with me. They said that there's no way of getting around it. It does cause the judder, so it's not just me. It is happening to other people. So with this G-Tenet pro product, I will be taking it off, and I will be trying something different. I'm not going to put Wolf's on. I'm going to search for a better glass product. Yeah, I think if Omni Garage had one question for you guys today um, out of this whole video, it would be what is the glass sealant or the glass coating that you've used? What's your experience with it? Yeah. Because I think that's something, like the lighting that we're on the chase for, yeah. let us know in the comments. Let us know what your recommendation is. I want something that's easy to, easy to be applied, I want something that's going to bead really well around 50 kilometers an hour, and I want something that's going to work well with the wipers. So let us know your thoughts on that. Then it was on to pretty much the main event. This is why we spent probably a good 60, 70 hours already up till this point, was to apply our ceramic coating to the car. Yeah. So we did spend a lot of time polishing getting that surface really nice and prepared because this is the fun part. This is what makes your car look really good. Yep. This is the part that um, makes your car look nice and shiny and this is the part where you feel like you're getting somewhere. It's real satisfying to put coatings on and um, this is a real a real feel good stage, isn't it? Well, it's one of those things as well that we've spent all this time preparing the paint for this part of the process. Um, and if you don't prepare it correctly, what you're doing when you're going and applying these products is you're locking in, I guess, the condition of your paint at that time. Yeah, um, for so the next really, couple of years. So, yeah. so you really want to make sure that you do spend that time that we've just talked about getting to this stage because it's well worth it when you apply this. This doesn't take very long. It's sort of done and dusted really quickly. So make sure that you spend your time. And that's where people will pay a lot of money to get your car nice and corrected for this part to look really well. Yeah, so what we did before we started with the ceramic is again, because we had the wheels off at this point in time, we didn't have the luxury of going outside to wash the car. So we went around again, and it was probably a, about a litre worth of surface prep, making yeah. sure that we had all of the polish off the car, so we had as much of a bare surface to work with as possible. Yeah, and I think in hindsight, I probably would rather that we did take the car outside, give it a bit of a, a gentle hose down, and then dry it off because I feel like we didn't quite get all the polish off the trim and stuff like that. There were a few areas in and around door jams and stuff that still had polish on it. So if you do have that luxury, take the car outside, give it a clean and come back because you will end up getting that surface a little bit cleaner than having to just use surface prep. Yeah, the reason why we went with the G-Technic products, um, I think it's mainly because we've heard a lot of good things about them prior, but we also had some experience using this on the WRX STI. Um, really easy to apply this product. Um, and I've been super happy and I've been raving to you on and on about how amazing EXO as a topper to Crystal Serum Light was yeah. um, for drying the car. Yeah. Um, and as you, you may have seen, um, if you haven't seen it, it's a video worth watching, the first wash video. Yeah. Your reaction after that, I think we'll put a little uh, little clip in here to show your reaction of EXO. I was, think uh, it's, it's something that I've never really experienced before because when you do dry your car and you've got some waxes or you've got some sort of spray on sealant type of thing onto your paint and you blow it, it, it there is water behavior but it's not great. And I mean when I when I had this product on and I blew, blew the car for the first time, it was sort of next level. So definitely the water behavior using this setup is definitely a lot better than you can with any sort of spray on product. And I had experience with Meguiar's Fast Finish prior to applying this and um, don't waste your time with the fast finish or those spray on sealants or those um, other type of products. Just go straight for this because I think you get more reward out of using that. Yeah, I think with these products here, what we did obviously, the Crystal Serum Light, this is our ceramic coating. So we did this one first here, again teamed up with the Car Pro Block um, in the suede applicator pad. Um, and what we did after that is we let the car sit uh, I think we let it sit for at least 12 hours, didn't yeah. we? No, we let, it, we let it sit, up, sit overnight. Oh, that's right. We made, let it cure overnight, and that was just one layer there. And then the following day, we then came back and we applied two layers of um, XOV4. Yeah, and XOV4 is basically your product. It's your topper to your ceramic coating. This adds the slickness, um, the hydrophobicity as well for that water behavior. Um, Bottle-wise for these, they're available in two different variants. You can get a 30ml bottle, which is the two that we have here, 30 and 30. 
you can get 50 as well. I found 30 was plenty for the crystal serum light, um, but we were really stretching, um, you know, to make that 30 mils last on the EXO, yeah. purely because uh, obviously two coats, so you are going to use more because you're going around the car twice. But I think it was the uh, the droplet as well on this one here versus the pipette that we were using on the CSL. I think you do tend to use a bit more product. So when you put this XO V4 on G10, and I've just read the back there, it says you've got to let it cure for 12 hours before you expose it to the elements and before you get the car wet. We then let that dry again overnight, so we definitely um, super exceeded our, our cure times. But just be careful that you want to make sure that you do let the car have that time for curing and stuff like that. Because you spend a lot of time getting to the stage, you don't want to ruin it just by driving it out in the wet elements. So make sure you do read the back of these products and, and let it stand and cure for those periods of time. And what we did as well, as we did each, uh, each section or each pass, um, probably section, not pass, we worked with the, uh, the towels here. These are Rag Company. Um, they are also a low GSM towel as well, real low pile, and we use those to remove our, re remove our coatings. Yeah, so we had one in each hand. We had a first white towel and a second white towel. The first white was basically making sure that the product was evenly spread across the surface, and we also went onto adjacent panels as well. The second towel was to make sure everything was completely removed. Went to the adjacent panels as well because you don't want to work too far ahead of yourself and push this onto yeah. onto other panels. But all yeah. in all, I, I mean, I had a great experience applying this product for the second time. Yeah, and just going back to how you apply this product, these products do come with little droplets, and um, I, I can't remember which way it is around, but one comes with a little dropping pipette. Yeah, I think the CSL has the uh, has the pipette. Yeah. Um, so you just drop a few layers onto your um, suede applicator there, which gets wrapped into this block, and um, you you're using it in like a cross hatch pattern so you're going up cross down up like that and then you're then turning the block and then you're going the other way yeah so you want to be really careful that when you're taking this product off using these towels that you are removing that product and you want to make sure that you're removing it from the adjacent panels in case you're spreading it and if you remember going back to the video there was a little section where we did leave a little high spot you if you do notice a high spot you want to react really quickly you want to get your polish out and you want to remove that high spot and reapply so that was a good little um we didn't think that was going to happen to us but um i think it's a good little note for you guys to go back and have a look to see what a high spot looks like so that if it does happen to you you can go and, and correct that really quickly yeah and i think the key there was we made sure to inspect it as we went we, yeah. we didn't go in blind you know we made sure we checked with our lighting um, and that was really early on in the piece as well. It's so probably a good little learn for us right up front. Um, and then the key at the end is these towels are no longer good for anything related to the car unless it's rag use, right? These are rags now uh, yep. because these towels will have little bits of ceramic coating that would have hardened in them. Um, and if you're going to run these across the paint, you will run the risk of adding scratches in because that does harden like glass. Yeah, so definitely biff them away or what we do is we just use them for, um, for rags. Now, I use 25 coating removal towels. These were the same towels that we used in the glass section to remove our glass coating. 25 towels is definitely enough, and now you've now got rags for the next couple of years. Yeah, so. I believe they're about a dollar, dollar twenty US each for these towels, so I would probably err on the safe side and get 25, yeah. 30 of them. They come in a box, I got the bigger box of 25, so it's already set for you by rag coming to get 25, and the more you buy, the cheaper it is, so I went with 25, and that was definitely enough for us. Yeah, so that was the ceramic coating part of the car, and that probably took us the better part of two and a half days. Obviously not continuous, but we did have that curing time in between that we did. Yep. So the next stage here is getting the wheels all dialed in. Now I've just lined up all these products and I've just had a little think that actually this is a lot of money here. So um, this is like a fortnight's paycheck. This is, yeah. So I'm not totally sure you need all these products to get the job done, but um, this is expensive. And there is a few products here that you do use time and time again, but... Um, We'll talk you through it, we'll work out what you do need and what you don't need, and I do know some of this is excessive and some of the parts I wouldn't do again, but um, here we go. So we started with um, Obsessed Garage Private Labeled um, Decon Soap with our NTM um, foam cannon, and we foamed the wheels down, and then we gave them a, a, a bit of a clean using our um, lamb's wool finger mitt here. Yeah, so we also had a couple of race glaze brushes that we used to get in some of the uh, the nooks and crannies of the wheels, yeah. um, which was quite handy. But um, I think further to what you were saying, a lot of the products we have on the table here are multi-use, right? So your Tyrex is not only for wheels, you're using that on the paint, the foam cannon, um, you know, the APC. There are a lot of them are multi-purpose, so it does look like a lot, but it's not all just solely for the wheels. And then just to finish that cleaning process, I um, put some brake buster into the foam cannon, foamed that up, and then gave it another little clean down. And that just helped to remove all that dirt and grime and things like that. The decontamination side was just to pull, I do have um, Meguiar's fast finish on the car, so that just to pull that 
hopefully try and pull that fast finish off and then finish it with our brake bust and the foam cannon. So then we moved into very similar to paint, the decontamination stage. So we did spray it down with iron. Um, and I think the biggest difference that we made on these wheels, they were absolutely covered in tar, especially yeah. the inner barrels. Tarex did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed using Tarex. So I sprayed it on, let it dwell, and you could just see the tar droplets coming off. I did have to scratch at them a little bit to get that tar, but Tarex did a fantastic job of pulling the tar off the wheels. Those came up absolutely spotless. And in sort of contrast to the paint, when using the, um, the Meguiar's um, Iron Decon here, we actually ended up pulling off quite a lot of iron off the uh, off those wheels. So um, I guess that's what happens when you've got steel brakes and those pads, they do build up a lot of iron. So we did see a lot of iron coming off. So those two products together did a really good job at sort of mechanically, well no, chemically decontaminating contaminating those wheels. So those two products along with these, Decon products is definitely something that I would recommend as a section that you do definitely need. You did say chemical though, not mechanical, but to be honest, the tarring stage, you uh, you put a bit of elbow grease into that to try and actually remove that in a barrel tar. Yeah. That was hard work. I think you used the reverse of a um, of one of the, the tire scrubbing brushes. Yeah. And that just helped to pull that 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 tar off. I do sort of where the where the wheel weights were, there was quite a lot of sticky glue and stuff where people have sort of taken a wheel weight off and changed a little bit. So you do probably need something that's good at removing um, those sticky things like sort of Car Pro um, Eraser. I did get that in there just to pull that sticky tacky stuff off and that did a nice job of just cleaning those um, those wheel weights off. Yeah, so one of the things that we, uh, we then did, um, which is probably something that we wouldn't revisit, right? I mean, when I say we, I mean you, you sat in the wheel arches for yeah. probably a good two hours yeah. um, using a combination of uh, heavy duty vinyl cleaner, all purpose cleaner, cleaner. Um, yeah. and basically scrub that plastic, um, which then when you put the wheels back on, you, you didn't really know it. You didn't done. really notice it. So I wouldn't do this stage again. It was nice to have the wheels off so that we could clean them really well, but I wouldn't get into those wheel arches. I wouldn't use my APC or anything like that to clean those wheel arches. It's, it's definitely not recommended. The fumes that I got coming out of there was not nice and I spent a lot of time in there. Um, I did clean up the brake calipers and things like that, so that was quite satisfactory. So I suppose you could probably do that, but I definitely wouldn't clean those wheel arches. I then um, topped those wheel arches plastic with um, hyperdrusing, just like we did at the engine bay. I sprayed it down four to one to give it a nice sheen matte finish. It does look nice, but as soon as you drive it out for the first time, oh, those wheel arches stuff up yeah. everywhere, right? So that's a section I wouldn't do, and that did cost us a lot of time. I spent a good half a day doing that pretty much not a lot of reward. So once the wheels were all cleaned, we had them decontaminated, basically we had a really clean surface, strip beer ready for ceramic coating, um, but what we did before we went and applied the ceramic was we cleaned up the tyres. Yeah, so I used a um, our tyre brush, our Tough Shine tyre brush in the cleaning process, just to strip back anything that was soaked into that rubber, and then I went through with a, a little bit of uh, mineral turpentine, and this just helps to clean the rubber, pull out anything, any tire dressing that was on that rubber. It does tend to dry the rubber out a little bit, but this mineral turpentine did a really good job at preparing the surface so that it could accept our um, Obsessed Garage private label tire dressing. Before we went into the tire dressing though, I got a razor blade and uh, Dean did oh, the, yeah. uh, the Michelin. So yeah. the Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, there are a lot of nibs on there and I've actually missed a whole bunch that I think were actually pushed right into the uh, So it doesn't design. bother me about denibbing the tyre and um, he decided for his yep. sort of, um, for himself that he needed to do that so he spent a bit of time getting the razor blade to do that and uh, he's missed a couple so best he gets back out there to tidy <laughs> them up, eh? But once we'd done that we moved into the, uh, I think the fun stage, right? It's kind of like the ceramic coating. Um, we dressed the tyres up using the uh, the Obsessed Garage tyre dressing yep. um, and then we moved into the ceramic coating stage and we had a special wheel product that we used for the first time. So this is um, a, a G-Technic uh, wheel armour which is the C5 and we just exactly like we did to apply this to the paint we did exactly the same thing and sort of applying it to the spokes of the wheel so we used our um, we used our car pro um, applicator and we just went through spoke at a time making sure that we cover the surface and then we used our, our our green removal towels to remove that product um, and it did a really good job and um, now coming back and cleaning it for you know time and time again it makes that cleaning process so much easier i can pretty much get to the point where i can spray the um the pressure washer onto the wheels and it will take most of that dirt off so i highly recommend applying that to your wheels i also applied the same product to the brake calipers and that's made the red stand out really well and it's also made cleaning those a lot easier 
Yeah, so that was pretty much everything that we used to clean the wheels, apart from a few little brushes and bits and bits, yep. bits and bobs that we, uh, we used to help us along the cleaning stage. So I finished up with using um, Hyde's Rust, um, Hyde Serum to remove that rust and stuff onto the rotors. I don't really recommend you need this product. It doesn't really do a good job at removing the rust. By the time you go out drive, use your brakes for the first couple of times, that rust is removed anyway. anyway. So you don't really need this product. And then I then applied this to the um, to the tyres, the obsessed um, tyre dressing to the wheels using um, a race glaze brush. This stuff is really nice to work with. It's got a nice pleasant sort of blueberry smell. It makes the tyres look nice and sort of deep rich black but doesn't apply a gloss. And there's no sling. So I have used um, Carpro Pearl before and I do notice a little bit of sling flicking up. But um, no sling with this and um, the more you apply this product the better it is to um, well, the better it sort of accepts to the tyre, so that's a really highly recommended product for me there. It's probably the best tyre dressing I've ever used. Yeah, I would agree with that. So then we got to the uh, interior stage of the detail, um, and what we actually did is left it about two weeks in between finishing the, uh, the ceramic coating. We, and need, we, the need, we needed a rest after doing yeah, that. We were well due a break. So that we just did this in a, in a normal weekend, we didn't take any special time off to do this. We started by pulling the seats out, which was a bit of a nightmare, but we really wanted to get those seats out so that we could clean that carpet underneath, and um, boy, did we have a bit of trouble trying to get those seats back Gee, in. And I think uh, I think you had pretty good uh, expectations as to how long this would take. Um, I definitely didn't. Your partner asked me how long that uh, this yeah. would take, and uh, I think I had said we'd, uh, we'd be done by about 2 o'clock, and that was about 9 a.m. in the morning. And, yeah, we were probably done by about 6 p.m. the following evening. Yeah, so take your time with this process because it takes a lot longer yeah. than you think it is, especially when you're doing a real deep interior clean like yeah. we did. So pulling the seats out, we cleaned all of the upholstery using the um, Kutch Kemi MZR. So this is your deep interior cleaner. And we used that with a, um, a steam, a steam sort of a steam mop. We used the Karcher SC3. And then we then followed that by with a, with a bristle um, upholstery extractor yeah and I think what we use at the same time is we uh, we actually use one of these brushes um, to make sure that we can agitate the, uh, the surface of the carpets in the car and um, something that you could use is uh, I've seen since some adapters that you can put on drills to um, to actually swirl and yeah. remove things but um, you know a bit of manual labor I think that um, that was quite uh, quite worthwhile except a lot of the bristles started to fall out after a while didn't they yeah so that exact process that we used for the upholstery was exactly the same that we used for the carpets we did um, the back seats as well, and, and things like the floor mats and stuff like that. We did do a sort of, we did spray a little bit of this MZR on the um, the roof liner. I didn't steam it, I just, no, sorry, I did steam it, but I, no. What did I do? You did steam it, you didn't scrub it. No. You didn't scrub it. I didn't steam it, but I just extracted it. That's right. I think if you're gonna use steam, there is the potential that, that that, that roof liner will start to delaminate over a period of time. So you want to be a little bit careful about doing that. So just the extraction. And that was fine. There were a couple of marks here and there and it did pull them out. So I do recommend that that's a good idea. So that worked really well for us. Yeah. What we did is um, is we teamed, uh, we teamed up the interior cleaner, um, obviously with the, the brush here for the carpets. Um, we used the race glaze brush to get in some of the tighter areas. And that helps the uh, the PMS interior cleaner foam up really well. Yeah. Um, and then obviously a whole bunch of, uh, of what we call the interior towels which are these Rag Company green towels. Um, these are actually really big towels as well. I think they're probably too big, um, but for what we were doing, which was soaking up a whole lot of product, I think these work quite well. Yeah, I think if you're gonna do normal interior cleaning, you probably want half that size, it's just easier to manage. But um, those towels were totally fine. And we did steam a few areas in and around things like the cup holders, and then around sort of gear sticks and stuff like that. That steaming did work to get a little bit of extra grime out. But these interior products work quite well. For me, I'm not a fan of this um, PNS Express interior cleaner. I don't like the smell, and when you're doing general cleaning, it tends to foam a little bit too much, and it does not really. I think these towels also struggle to pull that product out. It sort of tends to be like more foam activation. They're quite not, soapy, don't they? Yeah. These towels, even if they're not using a whole lot of product. So although it does a really good job at cleaning, it does a really good job at leaving behind a nice matte finish. I think for me, the smell and the foaming. I want to chase another product, so I want to chase another interior product. So we're going to do that as time goes, and um, hopefully find something that's slightly a bit better. Um, for the rep, for the things that I'm looking for, I'm looking for something that can come in a gallon. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for something that can come in a litre bottle. I'm looking for something that's going to leave a nice matte finish. I don't want sheen. I don't want sticky. I don't want tacky. I just want a nice matte 
sort of new look for the interior and I want something that smells nice. I think what this has going for it is the fact that it does leave that really nice, um, non-glossy, very matte finish. Um, no matter how much product you apply to the surface, right? I think that's what's going for it. What it doesn't have going for it is smell. Um, and it almost does get too foamy. I think if you do want a really good foaming cleaner, this is good to have. Yeah. Um, but as a general interior cleaner, it's probably a bit overkill. Yeah, that foam definitely is, is not good when you're doing your everyday cleaning, I think. No. So we're going to chase this. We'll see how we get on. And, and as we go through the year, you guys will see us um, testing out some new products. So then we moved into our, uh, into our glass as well. That was one of the final things that we did. Um, we did then come back into a final interior wipe down just to remove any uh, of the excess glass cleaner that did um, hit the dash. Uh, but we teamed up our trusty invisible glass with the invisible glass clean and reach tool. If you don't have this tool, highly recommend you get this. This is really handy for getting into tight areas um, in the corners of your windscreen. Um, but also if you can't, um, you know, can't reach a, a back corner window, you know, this tool here makes it super easy. And that tool looks a bit tacky, it's a bit of an ad scene on TV type of thing. Definitely recommend it, that's a tool that you need. And, oh, it's um, inexpensive as well. So I tend to spray invisible glass onto the glass, I, I give it a wipe with our waffle weave towel, and then I just finish it off with, with, with that tool and magic. Yep. Absolutely magic. And then we had another product um, that we thought we would give a go on the steering wheels. So obviously you clean the steering wheel, done a bit of really deep clean. Yep. Um, and use some white towels on that as well. And I think part of what came off was um, was dirt. I think probably some of the uh, the vinyl or the leather probably transferred onto the towel a bit. Um, but what we did to try and restore some of that was use the, uh, the Swiss back leather milk. And so that created, a sort of added some it added that milk back into the vinyl or, or leather and it created this nice matte finish. It made the steering wheel feel nice again and it sort of restored it after we'd pulled all of that dirt and, and oils out of the steering wheel. So that product did a really nice job at bringing that steering wheel up to a nice satisfactory level there. Yeah, and a feel of your steering wheel after, you know, the before and after difference, not just on uh, on look, but just on feel, feel it's, yeah. um, it felt like a brand new steering so wheel. So if you do have leather in your car, then you can combine that with the Swiss Facts leather cleaner that we do have here. But um, that sort of does a really good job of cleaning the leather and then you then follow it up with your leather milk to restore it. Yeah, so these products here as well, um, you know, they come in 250ml uh, variants. I think you can get a leader as well, but they're really expensive. Um, and I don't tend to touch these very often, but this leather milk, really nice smell to that as well. It's got a really distinct, um, I don't even know how to describe that smell. It's like, a, it's new, really it's like a new leather smell, really. It is, isn't it? it is. So I think that, um, that teamed up really well with that steering wheel, got yeah. it looking really nice. So we don't do any sort of flash coatings or any sort of sealants to the inside of the glass. We just maintain that the glass is nice and clean. We don't have any fogging issues. We don't do anything sort of cool with the interior of the glass. Keep it nice and simple. You have a nice straight finish and um, no fog or anything like that. So yeah. that process definitely works. So that pretty much wrapped up the, the whole part of the detail, right? The interior, um, I'd say across those two days, we probably put about 15 hours in total. So times that by two, we probably spent a good 25 to 30 hours on the interior of the car. Uh, but I think it was well worth it. The interior came up looking almost looking really um, good. You know, I wouldn't say brand new, but I mean the carpet's transformed from like a grey to uh, to a black again. Yeah, so you can definitely see that change. So if you go back and have a look at the videos, you, you can sort of pan through and you can get a bit of a before and after. We pretty much removed all the stains out of the upholstery, bearing in mind this car's 17 years old. I would like to have probably a bet that no one's actually gone to that sort of extreme pulling the car, pulling it, yeah. the seats out and cleaning that carpet and going to that sort of detail. So I think we've done a really good job. And these products work, so that process is definitely something that will keep in our arsenal, but we might change up our interior clean as time goes on. Yeah, do let us know if you've got any good interior detail recommendations. So then was probably the most enjoyable part of the whole process for you, which was your first experience getting to wash a ceramic coated car. Yeah, so this was a really enjoyable process for me. You know, looking back on all the hard work that we've done to get the surface nice and prepared and coated, because it made washing this car really enjoyable. So much easier to clean when it's all coated. And so just like our normal cleaning process, nothing else has changed here. We just went through our, our normal procedure. So we started by foaming the wheels using PNS um, Brake Buster. I used 200 mils in the foam cannon, MTM foam cannon here, and I used it straight up. 
foam the wheels, and then I use a selection of tools. So, yeah. I use so what we've got behind us here, we've got the uh, couple of really handy brushes. We've got the Incredi brush and the Easy Detail brush. And you like using both of these in combination, right? On your wheels? Yeah, but as time has got on, I've kind of started to not use this one as much, and I've started to use this one a bit more. So my spokes are really close together. So I find trying to get this Incredi mitt into the spokes, into the barrels, can be a bit difficult. You sort of got to jam it in and it scoots all the water out. So that can be a little bit difficult. I have started to use this um, this brush here because it's it, it sort of squishes down a lot more. So it allows me to get in there a little bit easier. And so I have sort of started to use this a little bit more. If I had spokes that were wider or I had like a, a six spoke design, then I would probably be using this brush a lot more. But I don't seem to be doing that, so I'm, I'm using this. The other two bits that we use on the uh, my wheels, we've got the Tough Shine brush, and that's to really clean and agitate the uh, the tyres to get those nice and tidy. Uh, and then race glaze brush as well. We've got a combination of these to get in some of the tighter areas around the wheels. So that just gets around the lug nuts and helps to clean up the caliper a lot easier. And then also I then finish up cleaning the wheels using our um, Lands Mall um, finger mitt here. This thing is really recommended. I recommend you get one of these. This makes cleaning the spokes so much easier. Yeah. Then what we did is uh, obviously sprayed the car down, so again the PF22 foam cannon, and, and we were trying Adam shampoo in this instance. It's not our normal shampoo, but you wanted to give that a go and see how yeah, it Yeah, so that shampoo's got a really nice sort of sort of citrusy blueberry scent, it's got a pH of 7, so it's relatively neutral, so therefore it's not going to strip back the ceramic coating and things like that. So I gave it a try, I'm not overly happy with the shampoos that we're using at the moment, we are sort of going through a bit of a shampoo testing phase where we are trying a few shampoos. You can see up here on the test shelf, these are the shampoos we've tried. And I'm sort of working through that process to find a shampoo that we really like. Once again, the prerequisites that we need is something that's in a small bottle, something that comes in a gallon, and something that's got a nice scent, foams well, works well in the bucket, doesn't reactivate. So we do have a, quite a few things on our list that we need to check off to get the shampoo right. So I think with the uh, first wash though, obviously using the Adam shampoo, I think experience with this beautiful smell, it's a little bit too thick. I think it's almost uh, too much of a, a concentrate. Um, it does reactivate quite a bit, um, but I think if you're looking for a really good smelling car wash, I don't think you can go too far to beat that no. one there. That's right up there in my top three. And bearing in mind, we are testing these. These are all really good shampoos. I haven't found one that's terrible. Um, so trying to just get into really, really good shampoo is what we're trying to aim for here. Yep. Going through the wash, obviously using our Microfiber Madness and Credit Mitt. Really, really like these mitts. You know, they hold a lot of water in them, which I think is one of the benefits of them. Um, and the, the way that you can hold this, I think when I first got it, I thought this is too big. Um, but because it is so heavy, you can kind of just glide it across the, uh, the paint. I think this here is uh, my favourite wash mitt of all and we, time. And we use the two bucket method, so we rinse with one bucket, and then we then add our soap and, sh and shampoo in the next bucket. And we have grip guards to try and hold some of that dirt and, and grime and stuff into the bottom of the bucket. And we're washing sort of, try and washing sort of top down. That process works really well. So once the wash was done, I think you got to the bit that, uh, the famous little uh, 10 second clip on uh, on the garage, right? The yeah. experience So go and, go and check that out. So we get the blower out, we get the ego blower out, and we blow the car down for the first time. The water behavior was absolutely exceptional. So. Um, Blowing the car down probably gets the car close to 90% dry, which is something I haven't really experienced before. Um, and that's just because we do have that ceramic coating topped with uh, XOV4. So those combinations have definitely proven to me now that that's definitely the way that we should be going because it dries the car really well. Yeah. So what we did um, once the car was pretty much dry with the Ego Blower is we topped it with Beadmaker. So this is kind of the, the tried and tested method that we've been using for quite some time now, right? Soak the paint down with Beadmaker using our, uh, again, rag company towels that we use really early on in the process yep. to help dry the car. So these are our drying aid towels. And when you're doing this for the first time, you want to make sure that you soak it down really well because you're putting on your first type, kind of like a first coating. So you are going to end up using a lot more product than you would necessarily on the second time. And then as time goes on, you don't need to use as much product. So one of the things as well that I've noticed is uh, you paired up your bead maker as well on the wheels, or topping that C5 armour. Yeah, so this is a process that I just tried. Um, I, at the end, I'd go through with my wheel towel and my um, bead maker here, and I'd apply it to the wheels. That sort of helps remove any little dirt that I didn't get in the cleaning process, as well as adding a topper to the wheels. 
and that works really well because when you come to rinse the wheels down for the first time it helps to remove all that brake dust and grime and it pretty much cleans them up really well so that's a process that I've adopted into my wheel drying process and it's something that you've now started doing too because it, it works really well. Yeah, I think it helps because definitely, especially cleaning the SDI wheels, they are, you know, the amount of spokes on there. Yeah. Um, it makes it really difficult to, uh, to get everything off in the wash stage. So what you can do, coming along with these um, wheel and tie towels that we use, and a bit of bead maker at the end, you add the, uh, you know, obviously add that layer of protection to it, make it a bit easier for next time. But you can also remove any dirt that you've missed in that wash process, which I find quite, um, quite easy to do. Um, and then we've got door jams, and we use something separate for the door jams. So this is my door jam towel. This is a really soft pile towel, and I use that with bee maker, and I go in and around the door jams, and I just help dry that sort of that water that's stuck into the door jams, clean them up, remove any dirt and stuff from there, and this really works really well. So if you keep on top of cleaning your door jams regularly, that process is really easy, and it's for me, it's a nice little feeling to know that when you open the door. Clean door jams as you step into the car really makes me happy. So that's why I continue to do this, and you've now started doing that as well. Yeah, you could do this with this towel here, um, but you know, this towel I think is another fantastic one to have in the arsenal. Really, really cheap as well, um, so why not have them all? So the final bit at the end of the first wash was again applying the tie dressing. So this was the second time, so obviously we had brand new Michelin Pilot Sports um, when we actually did our detail. Um, so that was the, the first layer that we did. And then at the end of the first wash, again, what we did with a race glaze brush is apply another layer of this tyre dressing. Um, and, and I find, again, the smell of this is absolutely fantastic. The tyres accept it really nicely as well, but I think that's key to the preparation. Using that brake buster, cleaning the tyre using the brush, getting it really nice and prepared to apply this. Um, and then what we do is we leveled it off. We came back with our wheel and tyre towels, leveled it off. You get that really nice matte finish to the tyre. Yeah, so this... Um this is some of the best tyre dressing I've ever used. So I have used a range of them. The smell of this, the way it accepts a tyre and the finish of it is really exceptional. So this is a product that I'm going to continue to use and this is one that we've sort of accepted into our wash process because it works really well. Um, when I apply the tyre dressing, it's kind, of like a, it's kind of like a conclusion point for me for cleaning the car. So the last thing I do, it's the most sort of enjoyable part that I like and it sort of concludes the wash and it's like, yep, I'm all done. So that's why I tend to do this last. So that is, uh, that's a pretty extensive wrap up. We've gone on for, for quite a long time now about pretty much every product that we've used as part of this detail process. Um, there is a whole lot more content behind this, right? So we'll have a playlist up in the corner right now which is the detail series playlist. If you haven't seen that, there's probably uh, a good half dozen hours worth of content. Um, and you can see us using all of this hands on, the exact process that we did. Um, this video is really a combination of our thoughts about using the, uh, the products. Um, and uh, it gives you guys a, an overview as to everything we used in the uh, in the process. Yeah, so as we've talked through this process, we've sort of told you what we do like, what's been accepted into the process, and also a few products that we didn't like and our reasons for it. So for those products that we didn't like, we're going to continue to test and, and sort of um, find out some products that we do want to be using and accept into our process. So you guys can follow along with that journey and, and watch us grow and, and we'll take on any feedback that you guys have with products that you sort of recommend that we should try out. Yeah, so let us know in the comments below any feedback you've got on any of the products that we've used or any recommendations as well. Obviously we've talked about the shampoo um, and the interior cleaner as two products that we're really keen on uh, continuing to explore. So let us know if you've got any great recommendations below. Make sure you check out that playlist to watch uh, the full detailed series. Um, but uh, again, thank you so much for watching the series. It was great fun, you know, 100 hours well spent, and I believe we've got a video coming out very shortly, which is going to be a condensed version of this whole series. So if you don't have six hours to watch the whole thing, that might be another option for you. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button for plenty more content to come.